Today, I'll be repairing a broken Game Boy Color. This is one of the items that came in a group of broken systems I previously bought from a Facebook seller. I already have some videos posted repairing the other items. Truth is, this system is the first one I started on from that Facebook lot, and I gave up at the time, for a very specific reason, which will become clear later. Fade transition. We'll try and fix this up and get it operational. First, let's just give it a quick test. Um, okay, I can already see this spring is it's just loose. That doesn't look good at all. Let's put some batteries in though and just give it a try. Yep, just does not turn on. We'll take this apart and see what we can find. And to remove those screws, I was using a two and a half millimeter tri-wing driver. So that's our questionable spring. Things don't look so bad in here, it's a little dirty, but. For the screws in here, you just need a regular Phillips two and a half millimeter will work fine. Set this whole thing to the side for now. I am going to just take it out completely and try and reform it. Just twist that. Should be able to get it out pretty easily. There it goes. Yeah, that should not be stretched out like that. So we'll try and just do this by hand. Squish it. Is that doing much at all? Not really. I wonder if I actually try and coil it as I squish. All right, so we managed to get it pretty good. Not perfect, but certainly better than before. Let's see if we can put it back in. This is not extremely easy to do. So to get this to thread in better, I'm actually gonna try and straighten out this little bent part temporarily. Might be good enough. Now that we've fished it through, we kinda need to get it centered on that blob and that blob. Okay, we finally got it in place after dinking around with that for way too long. Uh, I'm just gonna Squeeze this with the tweezers to kind of crimp it in a little bit. Make sure it's tight. Seems to be much better. I'm curious if it's gonna power on now that we've done this. Let's try it. Still nothing. I am suspicious of this switch just by the way it feels when I slide it back and forth. It feels almost sandy. We just have a multimeter with some probes that are going to beep when a circuit is complete. So pin one, I'm guessing, is common. I'll run across these three. Oh, what was that? One is continuous with this capacitor trace, and that makes sense because it's running up to it. So flip it on. Nothing. I would have expected continuity between pin one and one of these other three that are part of the switch when I turned it on. That's not happening, so we can try between the others. I think we have a problem with this switch. Okay, here you can see kind of this cross shape going on on the metal housing. So those pins are going to have to come out away from the brown plastic before I can lift that up. So with the tweezers, I can already start bending them. I don't know if... That's actually showing up, but I bent that one. Okay, I've tried to bend those wings out of the way. Let's see if I can start to lift this yet. Looks like it wants to come. There we go. Other side should not be as bad now, since I should be able to just kind of push it out. Yep, off she goes. Now let's see what the damage is here. Holy, this is extremely bad. That green stuff. That's patina on the copper. On the switch itself, you see the exact same things. This is, this is bad shape. Yeah, this switch might be too far gone. That looks really bad. This switch, it's over. So the situation is clear. We got a bad switch on this bad boy. And I have some replacements now. 
That's the reason it took me so long to get this second half of the footage. These things took like a month to ship. And actually, they're not even the correct switch type, but I'm gonna see if I can retrofit it anyway. Okay, back to where we left off. We need to get this switch out. Looking at the switch, and with my probes to check for continuity, I was able to determine that in the off position that you see the switch now, it connects the third pin with the first two. And when it's flipped on, it connects the second pin with the last two. Using this, I will try to make that work, considering the original switch, which of course has a first pin and three following it, and is larger in general, so this might be tricky to get it to work. We'll see what happens. With this realization, the challenge now is trying to get this to fit. Another complication is that this thing has little nubs on the back. Uh, I don't know that you can see that, but there's a pair of little nubs that seem to serve as an alignment feature for an appropriate circuit board. Clearly this one is not that. They're right between those two metal pins on either side of them. I'm going to chop those off with an X-Acto knife. Because right now, this doesn't sit flat. It's sort of teetering on those pins. Well, with the knife, they came off within 15 seconds, pretty much. It's easy to take out. Son of a... Should sit flat now when we set it down. Yeah, that's much better. I don't have that teeter-totter effect anymore. I think I may have just found the sweet spot. It's tricky, but it's doable. So, per my research on the switch and the diagram, when it's off, 1 and C should be connected, which if you cross-reference this with how the switch looks, it can work. However, I have to connect 1 up here and C in one of these three pins. The most obvious one is the top one. All three of these are connected to C. When the system is on, I need 3 and C connected. So, I can connect 3 here and C in the same spot I mentioned earlier, and that aligns with this diagram as well. So, uh, 2, I believe, is a dead pin, just because it's a lone pad, not connected to anything on this surface, and nothing I could find on the back either. So I think, with this orientation, I just need to solder it down and try it out. I mean, that's the best I can do at this point. Let's see what happens. Attempt number two with the second switch. Third attempt. I've done every solder joint since you've seen all of that enough. Let's see if this one works. Now we'll clean it up. It works. Let's start putting it back together then. Yay, it works. So this ended up being a switch replacement for the Game Boy Color. Uh, at first I didn't know what was wrong with it, obviously, but uh, here we are, and now it works. So I'm happy to see the end result. We have a functioning Game Boy Color. And all is well with the universe. I hope you took something from this. Maybe you have an issue with your own Game Boy, or you just like watching weird stuff like this. In either case, I hope it was fun for you. It was fun for me. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want any extra switches, I have no use for these, so let me know.